Hi everyone and welcome to this video about the cosine rule. This is a follow-up video in a series about all of the trigonometry you need to know at GCSE, so please feel free to check out the other videos in this series on the channel. Much like the sine rule, the cosine rule is used in situations where we don't have a right angle triangle. Of course, this is how we're going to label our triangle, with the capital letters representing the angles and the smaller lowercase letter opposite the angle representing the site. When we're going to use the cosine rule, we need to look out for what I like to call the sandwich. So this is going to consist of one side of the triangle, an angle, and the second side of the triangle that completes this sandwich. We can remember this by thinking of side, angle, side. In effect, the sides are the bread of the sandwich and the angle is in between, and the angle is, of course, the filling. Whenever you see this sort of situation, you should know that you need to use the cosine rule. This right here is the cosine rule. a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of a. There's a lot of hidden signs in the last part of the equation, just remember you're multiplying everything together. And finally, it's cosine of the angle a. You can use these letters interchangeably as long as you remember which is the particular angle in focus, and that will always be A, and then you can label the other two sides B and C. We can also rearrange this equation to find the cosine of A. If we're looking for the angle, this is going to make our life a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is add 2BC times cos A on both sides and subtract A squared on both sides. Then I can divide both sides by 2BC. This is going to give me the cosine of the angle A, and if I wanted to find the value of A, I could do the inverse cosine on both sides. These are the two versions of the cosine rule that I recommend that you are familiar with. Personally, I think the first version of the cosine rule should be enough, as if your algebra is strong enough, you should be able to rearrange and solve for A. However, if you don't feel like you have very strong algebra, or you struggle with rearranging, this second version of the equation is very useful as well. For some specifications, you'll be given both, other specifications, just the first equation. Let's take a look at how to use the cosine rule in an example. This question is asking us to find a missing side of the triangle. The triangle is not right angled, and I have this sandwich of a side length, an angle, and a second side length. This means I need to use the cosine rule. The first step is to label the triangle with A being the angle that is in focus. What I mean by the angle in focus is, well, the one inside the sandwich. So 115 is going to be that angle. So I label that A. That means the opposite side to that angle will be lowercase a. That's already labeled. As far as B and C goes, it doesn't actually matter which way round we label them. So I'm just going to go B on the left and C on the right. And so the corresponding sides will be B here and C here. Let's write down the cosine rule to find a side length. That means we're going to have the form with a squared on one side of the equation. Looking at this form of the equation, it's now time to substitute in everything that we know. We don't know the side length a, so we're going to leave that as a squared. The rest of these unknown variables can now be replaced with their numbers. So let's do that. You can see that I've placed the angle 115 in a bracket after cos, that's because in your calculator you'll need to close those brackets, and also it reminds us that the cosine function always takes an angle inside. Let's now place this right hand side of the equation into our calculator to work out the value of a squared. It's very important to remember that this value that we found is the value of a squared. A lot of students forget this and write this down as the value of a. However, you can always do a quick check to see if this is the correct answer by comparing your length to the other lengths inside of the triangle. So we must remember to square root both sides of the equation at this stage to find the value of a. And finally, we get that our answer is 12.8 centimeters. Another common mistake that people make is to round too early. So at this stage of the question, we should not round our answer before square rooting. Try and keep the entire answer in your calculator and then square root that. If you can't do that in your calculator, write down more significant figures than the final answer requires. 
So this question, if it required three significant figures, I would probably keep five or four significant figures as I'm working through the question and only round at the final step. This is a piece of advice that applies to all GCSE maths questions. Let's take a look at a question where we are asked to find the missing angle. Looking at this question, I can see I have a sandwich of a side, an angle, and a side. That means I'm going to use the cosine rule. When I'm using the cosine rule, the unknown angle, or the angle that we are focusing on inside the sandwich, is always labelled capital A. We are then going to label the opposite side to this angle capital A, lowercase a. Remember, the other two sides aren't important which way round you label them, so I'm going to have B at the bottom, that means capital B the angle at the top, and C this side length 8, so capital C will be on the left of the triangle there. Now let's write down our cosine rule. And once we've got that down, we can see that we're trying to find the missing angle A. It would be easier if we rearranged our equation first to have A by itself on one side. So let's do that. So this is something that we did a little bit earlier on. We've already got cosine A on one side of the equation and the other variables on the other side. The final step is to do the inverse of cosine on both sides of the equation. This will just leave the angle on the left hand side and then we will have inverse cos of the right hand side. Remember we apply inverse cos to the entire right hand side of the equation. So this is what the rearranged form will look like. Now it's time to replace all of these variables with the numbers that we have given to us in the question. Now that we've got all of those numbers in, we can just place that right hand side into our calculators to work out the value of A. And we find that A is 53.8 degrees to three significant figures. Here there's no need to round early because we have rearranged the equation so that we can just place the right hand side into our calculator in one step. Let's take a look at this example here. We are given a parallelogram, told the lengths of the diagonals, and we're asked to find the side lengths. We have been given one angle, this angle 120 here. This means we can also work out another angle on this diagram, which is this angle here. We know that on a straight line, angles add up to 180. So this angle is going to be 180 minus 120, so just 60 degrees. We can see that half of the diagonal is going to be 4 centimeters for the diagonal going from the top left to the bottom right. So this side length here is going to be 4. We also know that half of the other diagonal is just going to be 6 centimeters. We can see that we've got this triangle in the bottom of our parallelogram, which has one of its side lengths as the side length of the parallelogram. This triangle also has a side an angle and a side in a sandwich. So we need to use the cosine rule to find this missing length here. Let's label that length lowercase a. That means the angle in focus is of course our capital A. Remember the labeling of the other two sides is just B and C, doesn't matter which way round. Let's use the cosine rule then to work out this missing side length a. What we're going to do is replace what we know already. We know B, we know C, and we also know the capital A. placing the right hand side into our calculator and square rooting, because I'm just going to want the value of A here, is 8.72 centimeters. Let's now use the second triangle that we have inside of our parallelogram to work out this missing side length here. This blue side, of course, is also going to be six centimeters, where it is half of our diagonal of 12. The angle in focus this time is 60 degrees. This still sets up this side angle side sandwich that we require for our cosine rule. I'm going to label the side opposite 60 alpha just to differentiate between the A that we had in the first part of the question. So opposite alpha, we're going to say it's capital alpha, but that's equivalent of course to our capital A. So let's replace what we know in the cosine rule. We know B, we know C, and we know the angle in question. So alpha squared is going to be six squared plus four squared minus two times six times four times by cosine 
of 60 degrees this time. Let's work out the right hand side in the calculator and square root both sides. And we find that the value of alpha is 5.29 centimeters to three significant figures. This makes sense as an answer if we compare it to the answer from the first part. Alpha must be smaller than the length of A due to the way the parallelogram is set up. So that is the final solution to that question. Let's take a look at a final example together. This is a bearing question, however, we are going to still be using the cosine rule. The question is asking us what the distance between P and R is. We can see we've got this triangle here with two side lengths that are known, 40 and 30. If we were able to work out this angle here, we would have a side angle side sandwich, which would enable us to use the cosine rule. Let's see if we can figure out that angle. I'm just going to extend this north arrow at Q downwards into our triangle. This shows me that I have a missing angle here and another missing angle here. I can work these out very simply. Using the idea of parallel lines, I can see that I have a parallel line pair between the two north arrows, and PQ intersects these parallel lines, so 38 is going to be the same as this angle here using alternate angles. On the other side of the north arrow, I can see that I have 180 degrees straight line. So that means this section here is going to be 180 minus 125. Now I've worked out both of those two smaller angles combined, they are going to be the angle PQR. So let's add those together. Now we can use the cosine rule because we have a side, an angle, and another side sandwiched there. So let's write that down. We're after the length PR, so that means that's going to be our lowercase a, and of course the angle in focus was capital A anyway. Now let's plug in what we know. That works out to be 2625 and a load of decimals after that. So I'm just going to keep that in my calculator and square root both sides to work out the length of PR. Rounding my answer to three significant figures, I find that the length of PR is 51.2 kilometers. Let's just check that makes sense with the other two lengths of the question. And of course, PR is slightly longer than those two, but not that much longer. So 50 is around the same region as 40 and 30. That means my answer is probably correct. We're now tasked with working out the bearing of R from P. When we're asked to work out a bearing, we look for the word from, and the letter after that, or the point after that, is our starting position. So we're going to start from this north arrow at P. We're going to rotate around clockwise until we reach the line that joins R and P, which is that line there. So this is the angle that we are looking for. We've already got 38 as part of that angle. So what we need to do is find this part, this remaining section of the angle here. Let's just have a look at the setup inside of our triangle. It's a non-right angle triangle, so we're only allowed to use the cosine rule and sine rule. We can see that 93 is opposite our newly found 51.24, and the angle that we're searching for is opposite the side that is given 30. This cross arrow situation inside of the triangle is when we are supposed to use the sine rule. If you didn't quite spot that, you can watch the video on the sine rule, which I will link down in the comments section below. Let's write down the sine rule and use that to find the angle QPR. I'm going to plug in the variables that I know so far, keeping capital A as my missing angle. So sine of this unknown angle A is going to be above 30 kilometers, which is the opposite side to that angle. Now I can rearrange this equation, times both sides by 30, and do the inverse sine of both sides. I can now place that right hand side into my calculator to find this angle, which is 35.78 degrees. Now let's combine that that we found with the 38 that was previously there in order to find the bearing. Thank you for watching this video. I'm glad you've made it all the way to the end. If you have any questions about the video, remember you can leave them down in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.